Join us for a review of the all-new Seat Leon. Let's go! In the front, we can still see a very sharp design here from the Seat Leon that hasn't changed in this generation. Actually, the front hood, it looks a little bit, let's say, slimmer, all centralized to the you know, central logo there. This is the FR trim, so it's a sportier trim. We have a more accentuated bumper, for example, in the lower part. And again, these accentuations are a little bit stronger here in the new hood. Then you see here the headlamps, they come standard now with LED from base. And optional, you get matrix LED for more sophisticated high beam. 4 meters 37 or 172 inches is the length. That means 9 centimeters or about 3.5 inches longer than before. This one is the 5-door hatch. There will again also be the Estate, the Sports Tourer or ST, which is a little bit longer right here, but with the same wheelbase. Talking about wheelbase. The new VW Golf 8 and the Audi A3 received a shorter wheelbase from the same platform, whereas the Škoda Octavia and the Seat Leon also have the same longer wheelbase. And looking here at the rear, which is the most drastic design change with this light strip that goes all the way over the vehicle, this indeed belongs to the, um, you know, to the standing LED light. I activated that now here. The braking light does look different, soon more to that. Very beautiful in this integration. The Leon logo, however, looks more, let's say, old school, playful, a little bit reminding us of maybe past marketing campaigns where they stressed the Spanish heritage, for example. Doesn't fit to the rest of the vehicle, but could also just be a contrast. And showing you here something more about the lights, for example, when I hit the brakes, how it looks like then. The Leon also comes without gas struts, and then there's a one liter three cylinder turbo petrol engine with 90 or 110 horsepower. Then there's a 1.5 liter four cylinder turbo petrol with 130 or 150 horsepower. 150 horsepower you see here today. And then there's a two liter four cylinder with 90 horsepower. They are the ETSI when they're combined with the DSG, the dual clutch transmission, and then they serve as a mild hybrid. So the one also you see here today. So this is the 1.5 liter turbo petrol engine, four cylinder ETSI, mild hybrid with 150 horsepower and DSG and front wheel drive. Then there will also be diesel, two liter TDI, 115 or 150 horsepower. The latter one also with all wheel drive, optional. Then the PHEV, 1.4 liter, four cylinder with 204 horsepower system output. And there will also be a CNG engine, the TGI. Then this FR inside has a sporty trim with a steering wheel with flat bottom. If you want a steering wheel without animal skin cover, you have to go with the very base version and it's possible only. Inside contrast stitches, this top part here has a nice structure by the way and it's also somewhat soft touch. And these air vents, they remind us also of the all new Audi A3. Then sporty seats in this trim here, beautiful job, visual and also from the seat form. You see here is a kind of quilted structure on the inside and different material fabric on the inside. So they really keep you cool at summer and warm in winter and some leatherette accentuations on the outside. So good job with the seats. And we'll soon see more also of the instruments because you can see everything digital now. But it's good and very comfortable, so pretty happy with these seats. In the VW Golf, there are these new comfort seats available, ergo active seats. They are to me even a little bit better, but these sporty seats here already offer you a very decent comfort and are also soft enough and so on from the surface and so on. Now the interior overview. First of all, here the soft touch 
a very interesting structure. Then we have to here matte or brushed aluminum. Pretty cool insert here. Everything is very cleaned up from the whole visual part. Left side, always digital instruments in 10.25 inch. Right side, either a smaller eight inch screen or this one here, the 10 inch screen. Well, and soon more details to that. You see here, there are hardly any physical knobs left, especially not in the central area. Left side of the steering wheel, volume control, and also controls for the adaptive cruise control, but they are not that well placed, I think, especially the plus button for increasing speed. Soon more while driving. Then the right side to control digital instruments, the start-stop engine button has a heartbeat, uh, visualization, so to say. Then the new DSG shifting lever, if you don't have the manual version of the of, of an engine. And advantage is it's cleaner, it leaves more space, and it's also shift by wire, so there is no real physical connection here, especially when you go D and R and back again. These transitions then, front and back again, they are way faster then. And here we go with the central screen. So everything is done by touch. Also here the climate unit, you slide or press like this, or use the voice command. For example, saying like set temperature to 22 degrees or something, that's also possible. Or you can also say, I'm cold. No problem. So it will get warmer at the front also. left shortly. You can also use the voice input for the GPS system. It's a step forward, definitely, but not to be compared with the one that is offered by Mercedes and BMW, for example. This is, so to say, the main menu here. You can browse it like this. And um, here, by the way, also for volume control, but I would also do that rather at the steering wheel to have a physical button, but no physical AC vents. Then you can click here for seat heating, but doing that while driving is, I don't know, um, here for auto AC, that is how it's meant to be actually. You can also change temperature like this, sync again, or here to the separate climate menu and then where the vents are coming from. But again, while driving, super complicated. They want you rather to use the auto AC. Then you can have different hotkeys here, for example, to the media, radio, this one, and this here, the GPS. And you can see here, quite responsive, actually. That's good, but the whole visualization, I think, to me, looks a little bit old school, doesn't it? Here, the Apple CarPlay integration. Yeah, that's an old classic, definitely. And what about the sound system? It's quite bass heavy, isn't it? Well, the song is, but the sound system is as well. But the sound is actually quite clear. And now to the rear, which is one of the most significant changes. First of all, the door from the inside here is all hard pack in the rear. Then, legroom. And this is really cool so far, only in the Škoda Octavia, now also here. So, very good result. This is when I would be driving. So now you have plenty of legroom here in the rear. That's, of course, a big advantage. And Headroom also with 1 meter 86 or 6 with 1 works just fine. So you flip the logo to open the trunk right there, 380 liters, the same as before. Then a very high loading sill right here. I already flipped one of the seats, but the length here to the normal seat would be about yeah, almost 80 centimeters in the middle. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the all new Seat Leon. Here we're driving today the 1.5 TSI. In this case, the E TSI means it's the mild hybrid in combination with the DSG, the dual clutch transmission. Also, dual clutch transmission, as we shown you earlier, has been completely redesigned, very small and subtle now. And well, shifting in general is also very subtle because you hardly realize anything. It's so smooth, everything of the transmissions. Uh, transitions, everything just goes, you know, you, you hardly any notice any gear shifting. That's, of course, pretty cool. As for the fuel economy here with this mild hybrid, it in, indeed brings you some advantages. We already tested this one here also in the VW Golf and had like equal results. And you can, if you like, you know, really want to score the very best fuel economy get some five liters or more kilometers, that would be around 50 mpg. But that's not really realistic when you drive, let's say, normally. When you floor it out on the motorway, it's about eight liters or more kilometers. That's more in the 30 mpg regions. 
So the realistic figure then for normal day usage is in between. About six and a half liters, that's still quite good. And you know, that's 30 mpg plus definitely. So like mid 30 to 40 mpg figures. And that's actually quite good. Autonomous emergency brake also here notifying me. Of course, I had the situation in control, but you know, was already telling me, yeah, you know, when I'm not doing anything now, so you should hit the brakes. Here would be also a situation, for example, that would not move over to the left fast enough that um, this one also gives me a signal. This AEV, or called a front assist, has been revised for this generation. So it is, you know, say, you know, realizes more, has a higher significance also for the whole vehicle. ACC, the adaptive cruise control, has also been revised. And when you have the highest build spec of that, you also have a capacitive steering wheel, which we have here. That means I don't need to move the steering wheel, the car knows I'm actually controlling it. It is realizing that I'm holding onto the steering wheel. That's of course very good that you don't get false positives for the warning system that you have taken your hands off the steering wheel. So far, it's been a quite relaxing ride. You have a typical compact size feeling. This longer, a little bit longer length, and especially the longer wheelbase, I think you do realize it. And you know, recently I've driven the all new Audi A3. I've been driving the new VW Golf as well. These two have the shorter wheelbase. And I also remember how the Seat Leon drove so far. And it doesn't feel like completely different, but I think just on a subtle note, you do realize this one here has a little bit longer wheelbase. It has a little bit more calmness to the right. Mm. The question is, is it less agile? Yeah, we'll test some more corners. I wouldn't necessarily say it's way less agile or something. You know, the suspension is pretty good. We have the DCC here, so the adaptive suspension. Um, yeah, they, you know, we can pick something from the system system. We have to go to the drive profile and here then we can also go to the sports mode and in the sports mode the gears are also turned up higher steering carriage has changed a little bit suspension is also a little bit stiffer if you have the adaptive suspension let's see what about the power from 50 kilometers to 80 let's go Plop. there we go that was already almost 90 here when you're in the sports mode the gear is also just kept in a lower gear longer time and you also hear that from the engine usually you would drive with the comfort mode here and then the suspension is sit on a more comfortable node that's of course better the dcc dynamic chassis control this adaptive suspension is a very worthwhile upgrade so you should definitely get it unless you want a, you know just the base spec lay on intentionally Now, it's a little bit harder. Good feeling again here, let some left and right. Suspension is doing everything very well to keep the car pretty much upright. So we don't have too much leaning of the car to either side. There we go. Yeah, it's giving very good stable feeling, but I'm really not happy about this lane keep assist. So this would be one of the cars where I would say, yeah, let's deactivate it. And the thing is, you always have to deactivate it over and over again when you restart the vehicle. It's the law. Yeah, manufacturers can't do anything about that. So another lane change here at 100 kilometers an hour. Very stable and fun. And yeah, I really feel, I mean, it, it could be just a subtle feeling, but it seems that the Seat Leon here is set on this little, little sport here, I know, than the corporation internal competitors. What wouldn't be bad? I mean, it would keep up to its, to its visual part as well, and also to the general little bit uh, younger target group of the Seat brand. Getting in here again. That's what monitor is, of course, also on the other side. So good rolling characteristic. I feel that due to the longer wheelbase, the Seat Leon has especially gained here on motorway driving. So that's a little bit more relaxed, I feel.
And now to our conclusion for today with the all new Seat Leon. So it has, so to say, remained true to its origin. It's not super much different from the exterior. It has grown a little bit in size, especially in length and wheelbase. Therefore, you also have a more calm feeling, especially on the motorway. At the same time, due to the platform and the adaptive suspension, you can still move it in a very agile way. And to me, it also felt a little bit sportier in the A3 and the Volkswagen Golf, although this one here has a longer wheelbase. So, how can I rephrase that? It felt sportier suspension-wise, but not wheelbase-wise. So wheelbase-wise, it felt a little bit, you know, more, let's say, calm on the motorway especially, as I said earlier, but at the same time suspension-wise a little bit sportier than the A3 and the, and the VW Golf. So I think due to the setting here it evens out the longer wheelbase a little bit. Let's take it that way. Interior is also with a good build quality. There are some things where you say yeah that's maybe just a little bit simpler and that's also the main difference with the A3. So the Audi A3 is way more sophisticated in the interior. And I'm also not that content with the infotainment system because it's not that easy to control, especially not while driving. Assistance systems are very cool actually. Besides the lane keep assist, I think that would need some tweaking. Other than that, very good in driving also. Again, a very neutral and balanced handling, good feeling, great steering, and also a very decent fuel economy with this 1.5. ETSI or this mild hybrid system. So very interesting takes or findings from today. I hope you really enjoyed this episode. Please also tune in to the new VW Golf 8 episode, the Audi A3, and also to come up the Skoda Octavia, which has the same wheelbase.